month ago today, I sat on the edge of my hospital bed and I asked myself the simple question, why? I had worked for years to be where I was, a young social activist who co-created two successful nonprofit organizations, a good student, an even better friend, and a girl who never lacked positivity nor energy. I asked myself why I had ignored what was going on in my head for so long simply to maintain this reputation. I had already accomplished so much in my life when strange things began happening to me. When even though I was incredibly academically motivated in the past, I couldn't seem to do homework. And I removed myself from friends and I didn't answer my phone for a week and I refused to go to school and getting out of bed in the morning seemed impossible. Now, looking back, I realized that I had to redefine what success was. Because if everything I had done in my life leading up to that point deemed me successful, why was I sitting in the hospital? I realized that my ability to find this new normal, my ability to adapt to this newfound empathy, that's what makes me successful. Being diagnosed with clinical depression is what it took for me to realize what success was. Though I could go on, I'm not here to simply tell you all about my story. I'm here to tell you why I think this is happening, not only to me, but to a dangerous number of teenagers in this country. A statistic that is increasing every year, and why each one of you needs to advocate for programs and schools for teens that are suffering from depression and anxiety. Depression in our society is not obvious when walking down the street or the hallway, but simply open your laptops, laptops, your smartphones, your tablets, and do maybe one Google search and you will be blown away. After my one Google search, I found that after a study conducted in this spring, 1.6 million Tumblr blogs were examined, and of those, 200,000 contained pictures, videos, and text posts of teenagers hurting themselves due to depression. Is it because we now have the technology to express an ever-present feeling, or is it something greater? Is it just a coincidence that school systems and standardized tests, they're getting harder, and college acceptance rates are going down, and the pressures to be a stereotypical man or woman are everywhere? Is it possible that we, that this society, is the thing responsible for the increase in a disease that is more than capable of killing? And we don't talk about it much because it's often deemed a phase, or hormones, or being over-emotional. Oftentimes, conversations regarding mental illnesses, such as depression, result in words being thrown around that are nearly irrelevant. Depression is not the emotion, sadness. Depression is a state of being below neutrality. Sadness is an emotion that comes and goes just as happiness does. My biggest pet peeve is when someone comes up to you and says something along the lines of, I'm sorry, I was just depressed earlier. I'm so depressed right now. Depression does not just come and go, it's there. And it is the third largest cause of death among teenagers in this country. 4,400 kids commit suicide a year, and for every one of those, at least 100 attempt. So now I'm standing here asking you all the same simple question I asked myself when I was in the hospital. Why? But this time, it's why we're not doing more to prevent this. My school has a bridge program for kids that are transitioning in from an extended absence. Many of us have suffered from severe depression and severe anxiety, and many of us say that the program has saved our lives because it puts our mental health first. How can we be expected to be successful in life and, and go to a good college and have a good career if, if the pressure is too overwhelming and we don't even finish high school? Bridge talks to our parents, our teachers, anyone we need to know what is going on in order to help us cope. The Bridge team consists of an academic coordinator who has the weirdest taste in music, like this guy is either listening to Bob Marley or like tribal music, there's really no in between. We have a mental health specialist who is obsessed with Mini Butterfingers, an intern who is insanely good at Bananagrams, and another intern who though is very smart and goes to Harvard, has yet to advance past two songs on the guitar this year. But even so, these four people have become a both necessary and life-changing asset in mine and other Bridge students' lives. I'm here today to ask you all a quick favor. A quick favor to advocate to schools, advocate to your school boards for these programs. Because when I was in the mental hospital, I met a girl, we can call her Jane, and Jane had been there for weeks, and I had never met someone who, who understood what I was going through. And though I thought that she felt the exact same pain, had the exact same fear as me, she had been there for weeks, it was her third hospitalization, and her school had no support for her. 
I told her about Bridge and she was blown away that something like that existed. We shouldn't have to wait for these statistics to get higher and the number of teens to skyrocket because if we have the power to raise $100 million in a month for ALS, we have the power to advocate to schools for programs. I'm in the process of creating another nonprofit organization of which provides schools with the funding necessary to create these programs for teens. So please be on the lookout for that. But in the meantime, if you don't have depression or you don't know anyone who does, advocate for the 10 to 15% of our society that is suffering from this disease. We are so blessed to live in a country where our voices, our voices are meant to be heard and they actually mean something. So if just some of you who listen to me talk today advocate to your school boards and you beg, plead, demand that programs are set up and maybe you start a petition and it's for school funded support, whatever you do, just do something, the impact will be life changing. Together we can fight this disease that is controlling so many of us. And if you're out there and you're dealing with depression, turn the energy that you have towards hatred for this awful thing into energy for change. Because together we can fight back and we can't let it win. We can't let depression win anymore. It's time to fight back.